Uh, what a blessing being here. You know, you know, it, it, Peter was talking about us, our intellect and our this region and what it's like. And, you know, it's nothing wrong with being brilliant. And look at somebody and say, you need to shine. Uh, I always tell people I'm a lot more than just a pretty face. <laughs> but, but you have to know that faith isn't that. That's what I want to say. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. And I remember how... Brilliant I was in school. I ended up third in my graduating class in college at Texas A&M and just was a golden hair boy in the business world until I got diagnosed as having cancer on my optic nerve and lost my vision. And I remember when I had that diagnosis, I was at Herman Hospital in downtown Houston, and he left the room. The doctor left the room. And I said, Lord, don't let me think. See, that's what you have to do. You have to get to a place where your thoughts are not what's driving you. Amen. And it's really that simple. And you can be streetwise, and you still have to get to the place because that means you're at the top of understanding where you are out in the streets. But you still have to get to a place where you're not driven by your own understanding. And really, that's what Peter's talking about. That's what the prophetic helps you do. And that's, what, uh, that's why you have to hear the word of the Lord. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. Faith cometh. Everybody say it comes. Uh, you don't already have it, in other words. And yesterday's faith isn't enough for today. So it has to be renewed. And it's a daily. His mercy is there every day. His grace is there every day for you. And I remember the Lord, I said, Lord, don't let me think. I was sitting there. I was, it was in darkness because they had done so many tests on my eye. I'd lost my vision within three days. It was that radical. And uh, he, all of a sudden, the Lord spoke to me. And he said, uh, uh, this is for my glory. And all of a sudden, it lit up around the room with his voice. And uh, that was a t at a time I was really, we were really seeking the Lord, Pam and I. We were doing Shabbat every Friday night. Uh, this was back in the end of the 70s. That's how long we've been in all of what we've been in. And uh, we would meet with two other couples. We would do Shabbat. We would pray. And then we would paint. I'm an artist. A lot of people don't know that. So I used to paint a picture a week. And uh, uh, it was really what was unlocking a lot of the creative uh, energy that was in me that the Lord had put there. And... Uh, that night, I sat down, and we started painting. I was painting this house out in a storm. Storm was coming. The house was out on a uh, jutted over um, uh, hill jutting out toward the sea. And I couldn't get the perspective of the house because I couldn't use but one eye. And see, that's what happens with us. You have to have right perspective. To move forward and so I just finally out of, out of frustration went and laid down on the couch and of uh, this couple's house that we were at and Pam came over and she said what's wrong with you I said well other than I'm I, I'm uh got a diagnosis of having cancer on my optic nerve nothing <laughs> she said yes but what what's the real problem here? And I said, well, she said, the Lord spoke to you. I said, the Lord said uh, it is for his glory. But when I'd gone, when I went to the bathroom, the devil said, uh, you could die for his glory. And Pam said, you know, we really didn't come over here to talk about your problem. <laughs> She's such an interesting individual. 
She said, we came over here for you to do this painting. Why don't you get up and quit listening to the devil? She said, because that's bottom line what you're doing. You're letting the devil's voice rule what God said to you. And go finish the painting. This is the only painting that I... I, I don't have it. My brother has it. It's in his bathroom. And the house looks like this. And, it's, it, and it reminds me of how uh, in the midst of storm, uh, how even though we can't see clearly, God already has a way through the storm. Now, let me encourage you about that.